list our te uh, sampling techniques again so that we have them listed here. Or one of those random, random, random. stratified, stratified, cluster, cluster, cluster. Systematic. systematic. Convenience. Now, random is uh, sorry, I didn't mean to mark it out. Random is not really one of the four, right? It's random. You'd like them all to be sort of random. That's just a sort of a process or a way to do each of the four. Does that make sense? So these are our main four. Uh, 21 says, questioning students as they leave a university library, uh, a, res a researcher asks 355 students about their drinking habits. So they're leaving the library and you're questioning them. Is it stratified, cluster, systematic, or convenience? convenience. I, I would probably accept convenience there. <coughs> and I might also accept cluster because you're just there in one spot doing it. What might be bias about that? Let's, right. let's, and I guarantee on the test, when we do take this test here in a few minutes, that's what we should do. Right? When we do take the test, there's several problems on there that ask you, what is a bias for this study? So be like, I said they'd be fractured. Yeah, library equals one people equals less people. That might be. That's a, and I would accept that. So if they're in the library studying, that probably means they're not out drinking. Okay, so if they're in the library studying, they're probably not out doing stupid stuff. They're actually taking advantage of <coughs> their opportunity there. You might think of anything else. If I walked down the library and some goofball was standing there, well, let, let's do this. If, if Maddie walked out of the library and some Goofball was standing there asking questions. I'm hoping that Maddie, when she goes off to college, does what? Doesn't answer. Walks, Walks away, away from him. <laughs> All right? Now, I don't know. Some of these other guys, I don't know. I'd answer him. But I know you probably would have. <laughs> Here, here's the candy. Come get my van, little boy. That's what what if I get a free lifetime spy candy? There's a chance. There's a, there's a, there's a chance. There's a, there's a, a probability I can do it. I'm willing to take that. The chance. whole buildup of this class is to tell whether you're kidnapped or you'll be set for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> a lifetime supply of candy from Hershey. You just have to get done. The that thing I was thinking, out. if the guy kidnaps you, how many times he, you he may you give you a lifetime <laughs> supply of candy <laughs> as long <laughs> as you're. <laughs> Yeah, that lifetime supply of candy for like three pieces. No, it'd be some kind of pervert or something that can keep you around just by giving you candy. He's probably going to do it. Hey, if it's a king size Snickers bar, I might stay. Oh my god. That equals one week. Next question. See, I let myself get drug in. My life's shorter. Next question. 17. Goodness. A pharmaceutical company wants to test the effectiveness of a new allergy drug. The company identifies 250 females, 30 to 35 uh, years old, who suffer from severe allergies. The subjects are randomly assigned into two groups. One group is given the new allergy drug, and the other group is given a placebo that looks exactly like the new allergy drug. What do we say a placebo was again? It's nothing. It's nothing. Yeah, it's just, it's usually like a sugar pill or something. It's, it just, they give it to you to make you think that you're taking something along with the other people. Uh, after six months, the subject's symptoms are studied and compared. Identify the experiment experimental units and treatments used in the experiment. <coughs> so, they want us to, you're gonna have to help me with this one probably, identify the experimental units. 
What were the two units? What did they do? They had a group that they did what? They gave the drug to. Gave the drug to and a group that they didn't. Gave them the placebo. Uh, identify the potential problems with the experiment design being used and suggest a way to improve it. Yeah, I had some other people in there. Not just the 30 to 35 year old women. All right, maybe so more than just that age group. Couldn't it be biased because it's not double blind? All right, they didn't say it was double blind, did they? So if I'm the one given the drug and I give Ben the placebo and I give Brendan the real thing, could that be a little bias? Yeah, what am I probably going to do? I'm, I'm going to try to make sure that he's doing well. Hey, Brendan, don't go outside, man. Uh, allergies, don't, don't, don't stay in here. Hey, Ben, you can do whatever you want. All right, so it could be biased because of that. Uh, so we might make it double blind. How could the uh, this experiment be designed to be double blind? What would you have to do? We just said that, didn't we? Make sure that somebody, a neutral person, or is, is given the drug, or somehow the people who are making the drug doesn't know. It's got to be some neutral person or something giving out the stuff and keeping the records is basically the only way. Which a lot of times something like that happens because there's so much money in pharmaceuticals. If I'm the pharmaceutical and I know that Ben's the one handing stuff out, I probably were going to go, hey, taking the test. I'm trying to get the information to make it so I can, because if I can sell a pill that cures COVID, I'm set for life. All right. Other questions? Thirty-two. Uh, choosing between a census and a sampling. Again, a census goes with what? Population. A population. A sampling goes with <coughs> just a sample. 99.9% uh, .9 of the time, what are we going to pick? Sample. sample. All right. So when you're, we're not going to choose between a census and a sampling very often because. The only time we can actually do a, a census is if we cut our population down to like just prop stat students or something, something that's real simple. Uh, no, I guess we could do that. The average age of the resident of the 115 residents of a retirement community, like this one. We, this one we could do a census. Hopefully we could get all 115 and do whatever we need. How old are you? The most popular type of movie among 100,000 online movie renters. Well, that's probably a sampling because it, once we get to, we maybe, Phoenix is a gung ho, he could get all 100,000. I'm going to do it. You know, by the time he gets to like uh, 99,998, there's three new people on there and two of them quit and aren't on there anymore. Is that the two weirdos? We're making online movie reviews. Other questions? All this easy, McKenzie. Uh, what, what techniques were we using? What were the, what the bias ones? Is it the desk? Yeah, they're saying like techniques. Oh, I'm sorry. So for the 115 in the retirement, sorry, I didn't read all the directions, and my thing disappeared. What technique would you maybe use? I said system. What's well, a system? It's a census, so people would use that. So you probably wouldn't have to use any of them. You're just going to figure out. You might just use a. Go room to room. You might just use a survey or something, asking questions, something like that. I think that's more what they're asking here than. But yeah, because they're asking what would you use. So we probably maybe just use a survey or whatever. Does that make sense? Because these are how would we do it rather than what would we use. And then the other one, uh, 100,000 online movie renters. 
probably the same thing, sir, but if you just ask them questions. through 36 determine whether the survey question is biased if the question is biased uh, suggest that better wording so 33 why does eating whole grain foods improve your health is that a biased statement yes yeah how come because it, it, it should say question. it should say is whole grain food all right it, they're pointing you in the direction that they want you to go aren't they they say why is this healthy well, maybe it's not. Maybe you don't. Maybe, maybe you don't think it's healthy. All right. So it is biased. So a better way would be to say, is eating whole grain uh, foods, or does whole grain food eating whole grain foods improve your health? Why does text messaging while driving increase the risk of a crash? I kind of say it's not biased. Uh, it so it, it probably is biased again. And we need to get rid of what? Why? Just the why in front problem. Now we know, because there has been studies that is it, does it cause more crashes? Yeah, and they've done studies about it and if you're on your phone, and stupid me, I was actually on my phone, I never do this, I was on it yesterday. Left the center. The other side of the car. How much do you exercise during an average week? Is that bias? No, no. That sounds like a fairly good question. It's just straightforward. How much do you exercise? Uh, 30, 36. Why do you think the media have a negative effect on teen girls' dieting habits? Biased. Biased again. Again, what did it start with? Why? Why? Probably does the media have a negative effect on it? Other questions? Bring up weights, those and all. 40. 40. 40. Open and closed questions. Two types of survey questions are open questions and closed questions. An open question allows for any kind of response, a closed question allows for only a fixed response. If thinking of you guys here in school, if you had a question on the test and it's an open question, what kind of question might it be? An extended response question, like a paragraph or something. All right. If you had a closed question, it might be what? Multiple choice, true or false, something like that. All right. Matching. Uh, an open question, closed question. An open question and a closed question with its possible choices are given below. List an advantage and disadvantage of each question. Who keeps letting you out of class to disturb me? I still got a test in here. No way. I have plan later today. I may. How much money you got on you? Maybe four cents. I lost how to fix your grade. Open question. What can be done to get students to eat healthier foods? What's an advantage of that? All right, so you can get a whole lot of different ideas of what it could be. What's a disadvantage of it? This is why I don't give like paragraph problems on my tests and stuff. People talk too much. Too much time. 
it takes a whole lot of time to look at them and grade them and everything else. So when all of you are throwing a fit about, uh, I always forget her name, what's the English teacher's name? Miss Martin. 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 She's, uh, well, I can't remember her name. When, when all of you are throwing a fit, she ain't put grades in in six months, I don't know what she's doing. She read. That's probably why it takes forever to put in those grades. I don't think that long to read. I don't think that long to read. It does if you got a hundred students. But she's an English teacher. That's, That's true. That's why I didn't become an English teacher. That's a, that's a bunch. That's her fault for assigning some 10 page essays. And read it faster. She's standing there looking at the stack thinking, this is what I do when I grade tests. And your guys' this won't be too bad. Geometry tests are this way I want. The first one's usually the hardest one. Because once I get started, then it only takes a couple hours. But a couple hours. That first one, I sit there and look at it for probably three or four hours thinking, I don't even feel like this. Just skip the first one. <laughs> yeah, that helps. <laughs> Give that kid his Just throw him down the stairs. That, that, was, that was pretty funny, Sean. I, uh, let's see, second question, how would you get students to eat healthier foods? And then they give you three, make it mandatory. They give you three answers there. What's an advantage of that? You just got options and see which ones are the favorites and stuff. And that gives the student, if, if they're looking at it, I mean, if I'm taking, doing this, Whenever I do something online, it always kills me because now when you buy something or something, they want you to, oh, will you do this short survey? And a lot of times I'll say, okay, yeah, I'll do it. And it'll give you like one question, or it'll have one question on the page. Will you do this short survey? And it'll have a question, yes or no, or something like that. And you click on yes and say submit. And then all of a sudden now they pop up 10 other questions that, are, that you gotta type in stuff on. I'm like, no, 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 I didn't want to sign up for this. I just wanted to say yes or no. Get me off of here. And you're sort of stuck at that point. So if you're giving them choices, you might get more people to actually do it. Uh, what's a disadvantage? It's closed. It's closed. It's just, hey, these are the ideas I came up with. You guys can't have any ideas of your own. Pick one of mine. And that's not... Always a good thing. Other questions? Notes from last time. Get out the notes from last time real quick. A couple of things that I skipped over that I want to go back over. These are the things a few minutes ago when we were talking about like the survey and different things. We sort of went over these, but we went over them real, real quickly. And once I look back at it, I thought, I didn't cover them as well enough. I need to go back to <laughs> Do you have any extra? No, we're not. Oh, we're not playing them? Awesome. That works out great because I haven't been. You heard it the first one. So. Yeah, that first set I did just did You felt so nice. I'm all right. I was being nice. I don't know why. I shouldn't have that. I didn't do it. So an observational study, an observational study, a researcher observes and measures characteristics of interest for whatever it is. There was a famous woman that went out and lived with the apes for a while. I can't remember her name now. Some of you might know her. It's been a few years now. I think after a while, didn't it? She actually got killed by the apes or something. She went back a second time or a third time or something, but she was real famous. She went out and lived with the apes and just observed them. That's an observational study. Now, I wouldn't suggest that, you know, but if I'm observing just you guys each day, you know, what's happening, what's going on, uh, or all my classes, my geometry classes, they, I'm expected to do this all the time. I observe, like that class that's in here right before you, I observe the whole bunch of them. I'm going to have trouble throughout the year with them doing their homework. It's just, I can tell already. 
So that's sort of an observational thing. So that's something I probably need to take, take care of now and try to shorten up my lesson, make them do the assignments while they're sitting in there, so on and so on, figure out something to make it so that we can get through it better. All right? That'd be an observational study. So it's just, you're, you're just observing something and writing down characteristics, whatever part of that population, whatever you're trying to look at. Might be as easy as you have, maybe next year you're thinking about starting up a automotive uh, painting company. So you're going to paint cars for a living. So you sit out in the parking lot and you observe the cars going by and look at their colors. All right? As you're looking at them, you get an idea what's the you know what's more popular. And so when you start up your business, you probably buy more of that paint. Observational study. Uh, researchers on the uh, behavior of non-food. So this is with something that they did with babies. You ever see a baby, what's the, you hand them something, what's the first thing they did? Put it in their mouth, all right? Why did they do that? That's, they did studies on it, trying to figure out different stuff. Uh, an experiment, we may do an experiment. An experiment, and again, we, uh, we talked about this last time, but I ran over them real quick, and I thought man, I didn't cover them well. An experiment, you're actually doing something. Now, you've got to be careful, because can you always do an experiment? No. A lot of times, especially with pharmaceuticals, with kinds of medicine and stuff, you've got to be really, really careful doing an experiment. So if I go home in my barn, and I mix up some drug that I say is going to cure COVID, and I bring it in here, and I start passing it out to half of you and the other half is going to be the control group that I don't give it to, that could get me in big trouble because I'm mixing up something in my barn and I make half of you like real sick. We sent a waiver. That's true, yeah. I'll sign a waiver too. So, so you got to be careful. Have you been cooking something up in your barn? Yeah, I'm, you I'm going to bring it in Phoenix, especially after the conversations that you've had. <laughs> Believe me, you will not be in the control group. The control group, the control group doesn't get a treatment, all right? Sometimes they're given a placebo. Not always. It could just be I split you up in half and I say, all right, I'm going to give you guys the medicine. You guys are not. Yeah, and we'll just see what happens. Or here, we're going to have you take... Uh, this vitamin, everybody else not going to. And at, the, at the end, then, we look and see if the vitamin actually made anybody healthier. And this goes back to what we said last time, where if you know you're an ex in an experiment, I think it was called the Hawthorne effect, right? If you know you're in an experiment, what might happen if I give you the vitamin? You might change what you're doing and everything, and actually say, oh, yeah, look, it's building me up <coughs> off now. And then, then the other half that didn't get it, thank you. And then they're probably like Eversol. Alright? So that's the Hawthorne effect. Placebo again. Placebo's sort of a fake treatment. Uh, simulation. Simulation, we talked about this. Simulations, a lot more things are done with simulations now because of what? Computers. Computers. So we do a lot more simulation stuff. Like uh, when they're trying to decide earthquakes and tornadoes and, and the weather and stuff. They do simulations, all right? They're not going to, even though some of your parents might think so, because we live here in Preble County, and everybody's got their conspiracies. The government's not shooting stuff up into the sky and causing tornadoes or hurricanes or anything else just to see what they do. Huh? They're doing it in China. They're doing it in China. Is that what it is? 
for the Chinese government to do it to us? Is that what no, they're doing it to me. Oh, they're doing it to the Taiwan. I don't think that's happening. Look it up, man. I swear, I swear they're making weather over there. Get online and why well, I don't get online? Get online and read all this crap and move. Sixty million conspiracies. Government's doing this. These people are doing this. One simulation, I will say this because I remember what's on the test. Trying not to give away the test question. I don't want to give it away. You can give it away.
probably the most common way to do it is on a <laughs> computer. Surveys we use a lot more than probably uh, some of the other stuff, but just for basic things. So again, these are ways to collect the data. And I, I went over them just extremely quickly last time, and I wanted to make sure that we went back over them. The other four things are the different ways that we could come up with our sample, the stratified and all that. Those are the ways that we pick who we want to do a survey with or who we want to give the medicine to or whatever. Let's go back over here. survey the other day when you filled out that paper when you came in. Surveys, you probably see them all over the place. A lot of times you just skip over them and don't even mess with them. A lot of times on the internet, especially they'll lie to you and they get suckers like Phoenix that say, we're going to give you a piece of candy if you do the survey. And I do the survey. <laughs> they'll do the survey and we'll mail you the candy within three to five business days and you then get candy and it's all sad. So if you ever see him crying, <coughs> he just that's why he was crying. He, I didn't get my all the time. I didn't get my Snickers bar. They never said it. It's been five days. Chapter one. What's going to be on the chapter one test? I would not write this down. You might write down some other things here in a second. We'll go. Uh, I'll separate it a little bit. That's up to you. This is what's going to be on the chapter one test. You've already written all this down. Just me going back over it. Things that you need to know. How to distinguish between a population and a sample. Uh, distinguish between a parameter and a statistic. Parameter goes with what? Population. population. Statistic goes with? Sample. Uh, how to distinguish between descriptive and inferential statistics. Descriptive just as what? Describe. Describes it somehow. Right? Gives you the numbers. Gives you the information. Inferential does what? You make some kind of inference. You make some kind of judgment on the entire population. Uh, how to distinguish between qualitative and quantitative. What's qualitative? Quality. Just a quality, right? What's quantitative? Quantity. Some kind of numbers probably, some kind of quantity. Now remember, just because it's numbers, does that automatically mean it's quantitative? No. No. Like your Social Security numbers. Is that qualitative or quantitative? It's a quality, right? That's just a number to represent you. Uh, how to classify data in respect to the four levels. Nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Nominal, again, is just a name. Ordinal does what? Order. Puts it in some kind of order. Interval, what can you do with the interval that you can't do with the other two? Add, subtract. What can you do with the ratio that you can't do with the others? Multiply. multiply and divide. You can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Uh, how data are collected, that's what we just got done going over. A observational study, experiment, simulation, or survey. How to design an experiment. I think on the test I'm going to have you design an experiment. I have time. Class is only 80 minutes. Design an experiment is probably going to take a while, right? Uh, how to create a sampling using random sampling, simple random sampling. Again, we want everything to be as random as possible. So, so that's not a big deal. These are the ones that we mess with. Stratified. There it is. Stratified. Do you might remember what stratified was? It's like a strategy. You choose different members from each segment of the population. So, <coughs> if we were doing the school, what would we do? Class. You got a class. You got another class. All right, you take like this many from the freshman class, this many from the sophomore class, 
this many from the junior class, this many from the senior class. Stratify. Cluster. Certain groups. So if we were doing the school, what might we do? Maybe lunch tables. Maybe classrooms. Now in this classroom, most of you are seniors, but are all of you seniors? No. All right. So it might split up that way, and we're getting just bunches of different ones. Uh, systematic. What's systematic do? Each member is assigned a number. Every we pick like. We pick like every fourth person. So anytime you hear that, every fourth, every tenth, whatever, that's systematic. That's the one that's sort of mathematical. We're not missing something here. Convenience. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. Why didn't I put convenience on here? Convenience. I forgot how to spell it. What's convenience? Only available. It works for you. All right, it's just whatever happens to be easy. So. I stand outside my door and as people walk by I say, okay, what's your favorite color? And I write it down. That might be convenient for me. Uh, be able to identify bias, what's bias in the sample, all right? So be able to identify what or what's bias in not just the sample but in uh, the whole experiment or survey or whatever we're doing. And here there was several bias things that we did. Bias number one because you're all seniors. Okay, so that made it a little biased. And then there might be other things that made my survey biased, like the fact that you had to put your name on it and different things of that, those natures. Uh, it's up to you guys. That, all that stuff I just went over, do we you want me to go over it again and you write down stuff or you think you no. nail it? You nail it. All right. But that's all this is, I just separated it out. That's your assignment. Page 29, 1 through 38. Test. Next class. You have about 30 minutes.